All right, guys. So basically, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the engine plate out so that we can move it to the rear. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to scribe it off. We're going to cut it right down across here. And then we're also going to scribe it off and we're going to cut it right down across here. And then we're going to nick off this edge, making sure that there's plenty to be able to weld and nick it off so that there's plenty to be able to weld. Then from there, we'll stick it in the back of the chassis and then start reinforcement. Remember to wear your ear protection. Alright, so now that we have this out, you can see that the clutch assembly is right here. So what we're going to do is on the bottom of this, there's a couple of welds. So we're going to cut those welds off. That way we can relocate the entire clutch assembly over to the other side because it's going to be inverse of what it needs to be. Okay, so as you can see, we were able to pull that off. It's got the nice flat base on it, so I'm going to sand this down. From there, I'm going to reapply it. Probably somewhere along in here, I'm going to test fit it first and then weld it. Alright, so we came exactly 180 across from the other side, and we've cleaned it off. And we're going to get it tacked onto there, make sure that it's nice and plumb, and then tack it the rest of the way. Alright, so we got our plate all lined up. We're going to weld it in place now. Uh, one thing I did want to address is that on this particular tractor, the front, the uh, the transmission was actually an inch higher up in the back than it was in the front, so I had to place the um, entire engine mount one inch higher. Another thing I wanted to address is that the clutch stock is a V pulley, which means I'm going to have to swap it out for a flat idler in the final build, but I wanted to put a metal pulley in anyway. So later on this is going to get swapped out for this metal idler but now we're going to weld this across and then i'll probably weld in a brace piece up on each side and then from there we'll be able to chop the front off hey guys if you're one of my subscribers you know the fact that i try and keep most of my builds down to using just regular basic tools mostly the stuff that's in my thousand uh, dollar welding shop setup video which i'll post a link for just so that the new people can see in this case, I have a limited amount of time, and so I'm going to be cheating in this video. Um, I actually have a Hobart Air Force 250 CI plasma cutter. It's got the built-in air compressor and everything. A really great little plasma cutter for when you're doing small stuff like this. But for those that don't have one of these, you easily could do everything as far as cutting off the extra sections of frame using cut-off discs on a regular grinder. Um, that's how I did the engine plate in order to move that because I wanted to have the nice easily cut edges a Plasma cutter unless you have all the attachments you don't get crisp edges and you have to re-grind them um, Otherwise than that I'm pretty much using the plasma cutter because of the fact that I need to save time and because cutting through this kind of stock steel just each side alone I'd eat through a disc and I buy the uh, the Drunko disc, it sounds kind of like Drunko, but it's Dronco, D-R-O-N-C-O. These discs are really, really rugged. They last like three or four times longer than any Harbor Freight disc that I've ever ordered. 
Um, they definitely outlast most of the northern tool discs that I've ordered. They're worth the extra money. Um, you buy them in a 10-pack and 25-pack. They do not seem to sell them in singles, so you're going to shell out some cash. Anyways, let's get started. Well, this is pretty much the conclusion of my first part of this build. Um, the goal of this first part was just to get it to the point the engine plate was cut out, welded in place, reinforced so that this section would not flex, um, bolt up the engine, test fit a clutch assembly on the inside, which actually is the original clutch, just inverted to the opposite side. Um, at this point, now we get into really chop shopping the thing. From here what's going to happen in my next video is I will be taking this square stock and I'm going to cut off this entire front piece right in here on both sides so the whole thing comes off. I'm going to cut this off right across the front of this. This assembly will get inverted and become my front end so that your front axle is going to be right on the front. Eventually I'll make it into an A-frame assembly, but for now I need this piece just to test the concept. And then this square stock will get welded on the outside here so that I have that to go and tack my front end onto. And then on the underside I'll put a cross brace piece across the entire thing. That'll give me the chance to build a skid plate eventually that will cover the transmission. And I'll cover steering, hopefully, in the next couple of videos. But basically, this is a Craftsman 2 steering box. And this right here will get realigned with the center of this gear in underneath. So that essentially, it will sit like this, and you'll have your steering arm. So you'll be able to turn it like so for steering. Once I figure out the angles. In fact, what I may do is I might put this on a hinge so that that way I can angle it up and down depending on who's actually driving this thing. Because there could be anywhere from a 200 pound man to a 50 pound kid driving this and I want to be able to position this if need be. But otherwise than that, thanks for watching my build. Now I'm going to get this cut off. And in the next video, hopefully we'll have a chassis to look at. Have fun, guys. And there we go.